you have something to hide? Why would you just take papers away that a board member gave me? A state agency is looking into allegations of hundreds of thousands of dollars missing from a local charity. And CBS 7 is the only place you'll see it. Today marks the 13th day of record-setting heat for the entire year for West Texas, but we have changes in the forecast. We'll show you them coming up tonight at 10. Plus, it's one of the biggest construction projects ever in the basin. We'll get an exclusive look inside the new Wagner Noel Performing Arts Center. Searchers are refocusing their efforts in the case of missing teen Haley Dunn, and the Midland Library is showing what they have to offer the community, even in the midst of possible relocation. These stories right here on CBS 7 News at 10. CBS 7 is the first station to break open a state investigation into allegations of fraud and misuse of more than $186,000 by a local charity whose sole mission is to help low-income families. CBS 7's Shelley Childers was the only reporter at last night's board meeting for the Community Council of Reeves County, who also serves Ward, Wink, and Loving Counties. She's here in the newsroom with more. Shelley? Tonight, we have the 20-page investigation from the Texas Department of State Housing and Community Affairs. Despite the fact that the Community Council for Reeves County's Executive Director, Mary Jane Rios, tried to take my copy and run. You don't have anything to say to your clients? No. So you're just going to walk away and not say anything to your clients? Nothing. You're going to just take papers away from me that I had, yes. that a board member gave me? Yes. Shortly after this chase, a board member handed us another copy of the investigation, which outlines 27 findings of significant issues. The allegations range from destruction of documents to questionable signatures on payroll checks. A laundry list of misspent funds totaled to just over $186,000. And today we spoke with the Texas Department of Housing over the phone about the allegations. It's very disconcerting. The executive director for the Community Council of Reeves County, Mary Jane Rios, is accused most notably for several charges made to the La Tienda supermarket after hours. She told investigators she was helping a client she ran into and it happened only once. But several after hours charges were found most recently in April of this year. She still contends she did not know the name of the client. Then there's the accusation from staff members that Ms. Rios instructed them to discontinue the waiting list for a weatherization program. The investigation found that a member on the board who was unnamed actually benefited from that order and received more than $5,000 worth of weatherization to their home, and they didn't even qualify for the service. That, again, sort of would sicken me. Um, first of all, a board member is in a fiduciary role. And if they've got a, a personal interest in something, they um, should not be serving on the board. The investigation goes on. At one point, Ms. Rios even purchased appliances from the highest priced bidders. And to this day, those appliances have not been delivered to clients. Where anyone abuses their position and they, in fact, take that funding from people who truly do qualify, I just think that's extremely wrong and should be pursued aggressively. Are you suspicious of the executive director, Mary Jane Rios? I would not comment on that. Do you have something to hide? Do you have something to hide? Why would you just take papers away that a board member gave me? You have no answer? The Texas Department of Housing now tell us they are in communications with the state inspector general's office, but they are unsure at this time if criminal charges will be filed against executive director Mary Jane Rios or the board. Reporting live in the newsroom, Shelley Childers, CBS 7 News. Thank you, Shelley. A tentative meeting has been scheduled for next Thursday at 6 p.m. to be held at the Ward County Community Center in Monahans. Now, the board is expected to vote on turning their programs over to state control and disbanding. We will, of course, be there for the meeting and let you know if the time and the place change. And new information tonight into the criminal past of a man chosen by the Pecos City Council to be their new city manager. He tells the mayor the charges of bribery from 12 years ago were reduced to a misdemeanor and later taken off his record. Jim Aguilera says he pled no contest because he was on his way to retiring. Mayor Vanetta Seals says not once did, the mention, did he mention those charges. Seals says Aguilera turned in a resume but not the application that asks for a criminal past. Each of us have probably done something at some time in our past that we probably wish we could take back or redo. 
Seals also says Aguilera has not yet been hired, only chosen for the job, and they are still taking his past into consideration. More stories all new at 10 tonight. Midland County Sheriff Gary Painter says drug use is up in the county, but more alarming is that one of the drugs of choice is crack cocaine. Painter tells us that the most common substances abused in the basin are still alcohol and marijuana, but there is an increase in the use of crack cocaine, which is highly addictive. The largest group of users, he says, are between the ages of 16 and 30. It appears that we have more of it floating around. There's more people that are selling it. Uh, it is, it's growing in uh, popularity. Painter says the biggest problem is the rate of addiction. Crack is the purest form of cocaine boiled down and vapors are inhaled. He says over 95% of those arrested in Midland County are put behind bars for drug and alcohol abuse. And more stories making headlines tonight. Midland police are looking for a man who's been missing since Tuesday. This is 29-year-old Mark Bradford Hulslinder. He's 6'7", 320 pounds, and he's been missing since July 5th. If you have any information, you can contact Midland Police. 63-year-old Kay Menefield died after being caught in a house fire just before 7 o'clock this morning. Her two sons and a friend only suffered minor injuries in the blaze on the 3300 block of Perry. The Midland Fire Department says an overloaded power strip could have been the cause. And DPS troopers are investigating a rollover crash near, uh, near Stanton. It happened around 7 o'clock tonight on I-20. Troopers say a truck lost control, went into a spin, and rolled into a ditch. Two people were airlifted to Odessa with non-serious injuries. A blowout may have been the cause. And volunteers who have spent months searching for missing teenager Haley Dunn say they are refocusing their efforts. Searchers have gone on weekly since the 13-year-old disappeared from Colorado City over six months ago. The group says they are suspend, suspending their regular searches and will now focus on awareness measures throughout the community to help prevent future disappearances. No arrests have ever been made in this case. Haley's mother has moved to Austin and her boyfriend, the only named suspect in the case, also no longer lives in Colorado City. And the Colorado City Police Department has a new chief in charge of that investigation. Roy Owens was sworn in as chief on Tuesday. He replaces John Bivens, who led much of the investigation into Haley's disappearance. City Manager Pete Kempfer says Owens has plans to retire to, excuse me, reinitiate some of the components of that case. We, will co we continue all new tonight with CBS 7 exclusive. The Wagner Noel Performing Arts Center is nearing completion after more than two years of construction and it is receiving attention worldwide. Tonight, CBS 7's Robert Guadarrama takes us inside the new $81 million center for a tour that you'll see only here on CBS 7. In just a few months, West Texans will be filling these seats, enjoying live entertainment that they have never had access to right here at home. You can feel the vibrance, the, the, the anticipation, as the symphony uses, um, of, of what's going to be. The Wagner Noel staff is counting down the days until the Performing Arts Center's doors open. What's left are all the interior finishes, uh, setting of all the plumbing fixtures, uh, final paint, final clean, carpeting. Just a short wait before a world of professional entertainment takes the stage for West Texans. It is the community's building, all genre, all types of entertainment. The center will feature major concerts, Broadway shows, symphonies and comedy shows, just to name a few. People will not have to drive to Dallas or go to other markets. They'll come here. My goal is to have people in Dallas going, oh, that flight, Southwest flight for Midland leaves in, oh, uh, an hour we should get on it because it's a play that we can't see in Dallas. The center is well over 100,000 square feet. It features an 1800 seat auditorium, recital halls, and classrooms for UTPB's performing arts department. State of the art acoustics, uh, sound systems. The Wagner Noel is top of the line and a first for the Permian Basin. The architects, the acousticians, the, the everyone. Hunt construction, the best in the world. And it's getting worldwide recognition. If you get the copy of Venues Today, open the front page and there we are. 
If you'd like to come down and see the center for yourself, the staff here is offering free hard hat tours every Friday. For information on those, visit their website, wagnernoel.com. For now, reporting in Midland, Robert Guadarrama, CBS 7 News. Thank you, Robert. And Rod Stewart will be the first musical performance at the Wagner Noel Center in November. The center says it's the first in a series of special guests that they have planned to open up the new center. You can find more information on the Wagner Noel Performing Arts Center on our website at cbs7.com. In the middle of controversy surrounding the possible relocation of the Midland County Library, tonight they introduced their new director to the public. The open house was put on by the Friends of the Library who promote literacy and education through the area. They tell us they didn't know about the possible relocation of the facility and want their position known about the proposal. Friends of the Libraries and Literacy definitely want the library to stay here. We don't want it moved to the north side. A public hearing is scheduled for Monday morning at 9 a.m. at the Midland County Courthouse to discuss the future of the library location. Another day of record-breaking triple-digit heat. Can we expect any sort of relief for the weekend? I sure hope so. Meteorologist Juan Acuna is standing by with a look outside. Hi, Juan. Hi, Steph. Yeah, like you mentioned, we had record-breaking heat across West Texas for today, but as we take a look at your morning, things will kind of cool off just a little bit. We'll be into the lower 70s for Odessa. We'll look for 74 degrees, mostly clear conditions, a south-southwest wind 5 to 10 miles an hour. Just a little bit cooler out in Midland. We'll look for 73 degrees with some clouds around the area. That'll be the same case out in Big Spring as well into the mid-70s, 75 degrees for our friends there. And out in Pecos, a little bit cooler into the lower 70s, 72 degrees, south wind 5 to 10 miles an hour. And Fort Stockton should check in at 73 with clear skies as well as an alpine sitting into mainly the mid 60s for you folks. And finally, Marfa cooled off at 60 degrees with the south southwest wind at five to 10 miles an hour. Now, as we take a look at your hazardous weather outlook for the beginning of your weekend on Saturday, we had very hot and breezy conditions across much of the basin, looking for another triple digit day across the area. But changes are in the forecast and a lot more weather coming up in just a bit. Thank you, Juan. We're in the middle of the worst fire seasons we've ever seen, and some are doing whatever they can to help out. For the past several weeks, Vicki Slayton has been collecting donations from all over the community. Everything, including water, chapstick, and aspirin, is very needed. Something Slayton says needs to be done to show the support for the volunteer fire department. They're standing behind them, and that's what they need. They need to know they're appreciated and that we appreciate what they've done because they don't get paid and they need this stuff, so that's why I did it. Because of all the recent fires, Slayton is still accepting all donations. You can find out how by going to our website, cbs7.com. And Fort Stockton Holdings wants to overturn a ruling that do, that has starts from pumping water to Midland. So now they're requesting facts and findings from the Middle Pecos Groundwater Conservation District. And the board voted to adopt the facts and findings today, which means Fort Stockton Holdings has 20 days to review the information. After review, the company can file a request for rehearing. Now, if the board denies that request, the water battle will head to the district court. And Big Spring is gearing up for a big concert next weekend. West Fest is scheduled for next Saturday, that's July 16th. The event will be filled with country and rock bands from all over West Texas and the Permian Basin. And that's going to be held at the Comanche Trail Park Amphitheater. The show is scheduled to start at 11 in the morning and has no timetable for when it will end. Lots more to come here on CBS 7 News at 10. The Dunes sagebrush lizard could end, end up hurting the oil economy of West Texas, but what's it doing to the ranching industry? Local environmentalists have their own opinions. And do smaller doctor-run hospitals make for better medical care? We're asking one basin facility that operates that way every day. We had record-breaking heat for today, but that will, will that extend into your weekend? We'll take a look at that and just how high the chances of rain are next week. Weather's coming up in just a bit. The better chance stands for the western basin at this point, so we'll have to keep an eye on it to see how it goes. Okay, we'll keep a very close eye on that. We, we want that rain. We need the rain, absolutely. All right, thank you, Juan. 
A species conservation group is speaking out against claims that listing the sand dune lizard on the endangered species list would hurt ranching in West Texas. Earlier this week, CBS 7 spoke with the Texas and Southwestern Cattle Raisers Association, who said that the lizard listing could derail the industry and affect the food supply. Washington, D.C. based Defenders of Wildlife say it's not true. The defenders claim that there is no truth to their argument that protecting the species will severely damage the industry. The defenders say that the ranching association is flat out lying. And a gas leak forces a popular Friday night eatery to shut their doors. And hospitals are usually owned by counties or corporations. But a new study shows the smaller doctor owned facilities could provide you with better care. So we're asking the professionals. Those stories are next. You're watching CBS 7 News, your eye on West Texas. A gas leak has forced the closure of a popular Midland restaurant. Olive Garden had to shut their doors on one of their most popular nights because of the leak. Workers there tell us that they're working hard to get that fixed and hope to reopen to their weekend crowd tomorrow. And a recent study shows that hospitals owned by doctors have a higher quality of care and there's no shortage of such facilities here in West Texas. Basin Healthcare is a small Permian Basin medical facility that's completely owned by the doctors that work there. Dr. Richard Bartlett says it's all about professionals who have a passion for their work. If a person's passionate about something, they'll, they'll tend to do better and be more invested in it emotionally and that'll tend to have better quality results. Dr. Bartlett compares the hospital to a basketball team who plays better when they're coached by a former player. Well, speaking of sports, Brian Wilkerson joins us now with a look at what's going on today in sports. And of course, Texas Rangers fans still mourning a great loss today. Yeah, we're going to get into that tragedy over in Arlington. We also have some golf on the menu as well as some soccer. And we're going to talk a little NBA. But first, let's get to our trivia question sponsored really hot this weekend really hot this weekend we have triple digit heat once again we'll look for 100 on saturday and 99 on sunday and then we introduce isolated shower activity throughout the week all right thank you very much mm -hmm. I stumped you with the trivia you thing. You did. Right? I didn't know what to say. I know them all only because I put them <laughs> in. So I didn't want to make you feel silly. But you know what? Ben Taylor won tonight. He is our trivia genius. Today. <laughs> He's so a genius. Congratulations I never him. know the answers. <laughs> David Letterman is coming up next. You make it a great weekend. <laughs>